I started reading One Piece. Yup, yup, I know, about time. One Piece fans, I'd love to hear how much I'm going to love this series. Just no spoilers, please. I already know that if any of you guys are watching, One Piece fans are like some of the most diehard fans I know. They're just going to blah, 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 just start typing in the comments. Oh my god, you're gonna love this series. Oh my gosh, this series is gonna be amazing. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be the best manga ever for time. I get it, I get it, I get it. I love to hear it. I wanna hear all of it. So please just leave it down in the comments. I'd love to hear it. But before I get to the review, I'm going to answer the question of why I decided to read it instead of watch it. If you don't want to hear that reason and just want to go straight to the review, then skip to the timestamp. Anyways, I did watch it for a bit, and I normally do tend to watch animes before deciding to delve into the original versions of them because I prefer watching over reading. However, I ran into some issues when trying to watch all of One Piece. There are three main reasons for why at the end of the day I decided to start reading it instead of watching it. First being time. I simply just don't have the time to watch all the episodes of One Piece while also paying attention. Maybe if I could just play it in the background I would, but I want to fully immerse myself into this legendary tale. Second being length. It would simply just take too long to catch up to this series. With the anime, I would probably only be able to watch four episodes max and that's being super generous with myself there are 1097 episodes in one piece and it would still take me over 274 days just to catch up and that's assuming i don't die first before catching up but with manga i can read it at any time i can read manga way faster than watching anime as well as i can read it anywhere i want if i am bored waiting somewhere i can just pull out the manga and start reading i can't really watch anywhere so it's just a lot more convenient to read a manga and finally the third reason kind of ties into the second and that is there's just too much fluff. A lot of episodes in One Piece have a ton of filler added to it, which is fine because that's what anime did it back in the day, but it doesn't age well. And that leads to super long watch times and episodes that kind of lead to nothing. I just want to be there for the journey with this story, not be forced to drag through a bunch of filler. It was already kind of hard to watch the anime. So just reading the manga, like switching over to the manga, just felt a lot better for me personally. That being said, I did start off with the anime. I watched the anime till the Alabasta arc. Now I will be rating each arc as I read it in this series. And to get it out of the way, we're going to start with the arcs that I watched in the anime before I get into the manga. So this video is going to be about the arcs before the Alabasta arc. Now, quick discretion. My scoring system, there might be some confusion. So for me, when I rate things, 5 out of 10 means average. So 6 out of 10 is still above average. So if you see me rate an arc a 6 out of 10, don't go freaking out like, Oh casual, how could you rate my precious beloved arc a 6 out of 10? Calm down, calm down. 6 out of 10 is still a pretty good score. All right, now that we got all that out of the way, let's get on to it. Quick light speed thoughts on the anime arcs that I watched. I won't go over all of them to be honest, just the two main ones, I guess you could say. Basically, I'm just gonna go over the Barati arc and the uh, Arlong Park arc. <laughs> um, we're gonna go and start with the Barati arc. I love this arc. Everything from the fights to character interactions, etc. Zoro versus Mihawk. When Mihawk just pulled out that sword, like that tiny sword from his necklace, like, hey, bro, you ain't worth my time. Oh man, Zoro did not want to take that level of disrespect. And then as soon as as soon as Mihawk saw that Zoro was really about that, he was about that life. He was simply just like, oh shoot, I didn't know you actually like that. All right, all right, I'll give you the respect you deserve. And he just pulled out this freaking cross sword with the biggest handguard. Proceeded to just finish Zoro in one strike, but not killing him because he saw the potential. Honestly, this fight was amazing. I love the showings of respect these two gave. It was just so nice. But the thing I liked the most in this arc was Sanji's backstory and relationship with Zeph. I'm not gonna lie, the scene when Sanji left and Zeph tells Sanji to not catch a cold and Sanji gets down on her knees crying and thanking him for everything, I'm not ashamed to admit it, but I cried like a baby during that scene. I cried so much during that scene. Like, I don't know what came over me. I don't know why. 
but I don't think I've ever cried that much from an anime before in my entire life. That scene had me bawling like a waterfall, man. I could not stop crying. And I rewatched it and I started crying again! <laughs> That scene is amazing. I I don't I don't know what is it about that scene. That scene in particular made me cry so much. Anyways, overall amazing arc. Um probably my favorite arc so far. I would give it a 9 out of 10 personally. Then we have the Arlong Park arc. This was also an amazing arc. Everyone knows the iconic moments of this arc, but something about this arc that I do want to highlight is Luffy. Luffy is a shonen protagonist, and y'all know how shonen protagonists typically are. But there are certain aspects of his character that I really like, and what makes and it's what makes him my favorite One Piece character so far, and allows him to be an amazing iteration of a typical shonen protagonist. One of these aspects is shown here. So basically, Luffy respects his crew or people that he considers his friends a lot. He respects their privacy, he respects their business. Basically, he lets you handle your business on your own. He lets you handle your problems as you wish. But he's always there for you if you need him. And when it's all said and done, he's going to help you no matter what if you ask. He respects you to deal with your problems as you wish because you are your own person. But if you ask him for help, He's always willing and he will do everything he can to help you. And I love that about him. I love that about him. I, I, I Also, I just love his acceptance for everything in achieving his dreams. He's okay with it all, how dangerous it might be, and everything. Even in the face of death, he faces it with a smile because he would have died trying to achieve his dreams. He doesn't necessarily need his dreams to come true to feel content and happy when he dies. He's perfectly fine with dying on the journey and it's just something that's so interesting and nice in a weird way to see. And more aspects of this is shown later on, but that's just highlighting too. I love this iteration of a typical shonen protagonist. Now on the opposite side of the spectrum, I do want to go over this, this guy. Ooh. Last thing I want to go over is on the opposite side of the spectrum, my least favorite character, Usopp. I do not like Usopp. He's the only One Piece character that I don't like personally and wish he wasn't in the series. Sanji annoys me a lot too, but I don't hate him. I hate Usopp. He's more tolerable when I started reading the manga because I don't have to hear his stupid voice every time. But in general, I can't with Usopp. He's not funny, he's just annoying. And I genuinely don't understand what people like about him. I know already the things about Usopp that are gonna be said. I don't know anything that happens with him, but I know that typically when I look at comment sections or I even talk to someone who's a One Piece fan, they always go, Oh, just you wait, Casual. He's gonna be your favorite character. Well, he's not right now, and I wish he was never in the crew, and I'm not sorry. Like, I thought he was going to change his ways when he left with the crew, but this boy learned nothing and continued to act the exact same way. I won't let Usopp spoil my mood for this amazing story. Overall, this arc was also amazing. Not as good as the Barati arc in my opinion, but amazing nonetheless. 8 out of 10 I would give it. Overall, I'm really enjoying this story so far. The character dynamics are everything. The crew being together, I love it. The loyalty and trust they have in one another. I can definitely see why people love this show already. You definitely do feel like you're on a journey with these characters. Whew! Anyway, that's all the anime arcs I will go over because those are the ones that left an impact on me, to be honest. The rest are like 5 out of 10 and 6 out of 10, like around that range. I will be going over the Alabasa arc separately in the next video I do in this series, but for now, something I do want to do at the end of these videos to make it fun is I want to rank the crew members from my favorite to least favorite, and I'll only mention it if something changes. So far, my favorites are number one, Luffy, number two, Zoro, number three, Nami, number four, Sanji, and number one million, Usopp. No, I did not misspeak. Anyways, in the next video, I will delve into the All of Boss arc, so stay tuned for that. But for now, if you enjoyed the video, please click subscribe and the like button, and please feel free to share this video to anyone you want. Also, please write a comment in this comment section below. I would love to talk about this with you guys. No spoilers, please. And with all that being said, as always, have a great day.